are we all beautiful people? We are okay, we are still on our jacket illustration, but somebody just said, Mama, please do this illustration for me. Okay, so I want to do this in particular illustration because of one of my lovely viewers. Okay, and it's called hip padding, right? Now, are you aware that sometimes when you make your clothes, when you make your clothes and you don't pad it, and you made that cloth and it's very beautiful, okay? But the person's shapes tends to spoil that cloth that you made, even though that your cloth you made was very beautiful, okay? But the person's shape did not carry it well. Before you go, no. What I ordered versus what I got was that shilling. Okay, to avoid that, there are little here and there's that you can do more, especially when you are making corsets. Let me tell you, except you have a very flat tummy and your hips is pronounced, if you make corsets, no matter how you snatch the tummy, the hip is always sometimes a problem. So to help us that are not a really hippy, we do what is called hip padding. We pad the material itself. I see some people padding the lining. If you pad the lining, it will be shaken. So pad the material itself, okay? On this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to pad the material so that it will stay, okay? I will give you people all the nooks and cranny, the things that you can do so that your hip padding will stay and last. Have you ever seen Boborinsky on corsets? He padded their hips. Go and look at all his pictures. And that's why you see it, you'll be doing wow, wow. Is it not now that he went to court that we now find out that he did not do maybe any hip surgery? I stand to be corrected, please. I know that what he's doing is his means of livelihood. I'm just citing an example, okay? So, what they do for him is serious hip padding. Now, when you are padding your hips, This is the material you use for your hip padding. Some people call it wadding, okay? This is what you use to pad your breast pad. Now, you can use this thing for the hip padding. Ask them for wadding in the market, okay? Some people used to double this wadding, okay? You can double it for the thickness that you want. But I will advise, when you are, when you are making your hip padding, please make it to be not to be very pronounced. I see some people that pad the sides of the hip and they still pad the butt area of their skirt. Now that butt area you are padding, because the person will sit down, dance, shake and shake and shake, you know, that it will become obvious that something is there, okay? So I always advise people, please pad the sides of the hip alone. Just leave the center back of the back, okay? The center line of the back. Just pad the sides of the hips, okay? So when you pad the sides of the hip and it's pronounced, then everything will lie. But then, if you are padding the side of the hips, you will do well not to double it a lot. Or you chisel it out so that it will lap. If not, it will be very obvious that you did something to the side. In all that we are doing, what we want to do is hide our techniques. Hide the techniques we used, okay? So this is what you are going to be using for the hip padding. So let me go ahead and cut out this particular skirt. The reason for my cutting it out first is so that this is the pattern I'm using, okay? This is the pattern I'm using. I will cut it on my material. So this is my material on fold, okay? This is my material on fold, okay? Okay, so this is my material on fold for the front. This is my front bodies. We set it aside and cut the back bodies too. Why we are cutting it is because this particular back pattern will later be destroyed. Eh? It will later be destroyed in the quest of cutting out the padding itself. Okay, so let's cut it out so that we'll know that we are not... Please, you know that when cutting your own, the back has some things you have to do to it right i already talked about about it in the in my former videos so you can go back and watch how to cut a basic bodies a basic skirt block okay it will help you but now i want to concentrate on the hip padding that's why i'm not really explaining how i made 
I got to this point okay so this is the front pattern and this is the back pattern of course you know they are not supposed to be the same but for this tutorial i want to just use it like this so that it will be fast i told you guys i like managing our data as i'm managing for you i'm still managing for myself okay so the less length i have in my videos the better for me okay so now what you are going to do is i see a lot of people taking their hip padding down to the knee area and i think it will be making your clothes look funny and bulky around the knee area so or what i have been doing that has been working for me is this watch me carefully now you will measure two inches from your waistline okay you measure two inches i want to assume that this is my two inches and i mark now if your skirt is below your if you are making this heat padding for a six pieces skirt please join all the pieces first join all the front join all the back okay if you are making for a normal pencil skirt okay so you don't have to but if you are making for a, a, a six pieces or 12 pieces skirt please join all the pieces so that you have front and back just like this you have the front and you have the back not that you have pieces pieces okay so now you mark two inches down now you come and mark you know after this hip line we now have the knee line right just a little bit above the knee line make it like two inches above i want to assume that this is my knee line okay so two inches above my knee line i will mark it now on the hip line i'll be coming in by six inches but remember that this particular uh, skirt block has two inches allowance okay some people always used to cut out the allowance and concentrate on this where uh, on the bodies while cutting hip padding but i don't do mine that way reason why i don't do it that way is because i want to sew it into this place that is what is going to make it stay okay that's what is going to make it stay well okay if you do not sew it into this place it will be shaken i will still show you what you are going to do by the time i finish padding my skirt only if the owner uses results to just tearing it if not it can shift you can't be moving and it will be shifting you will see some uh hip padding that when the owner of the when the uh, wearer is wearing it you will be seeing movement to tell you that there's something the person is wearing underneath it's not supposed to be so so two inches a little bit above the knee line two inches from the waistline down now because i want it to be attached going to my sewing allowance that is two inches and i'm coming out by six inches so i now have eight inches and i mark my eight i want to assume you put your uh, tape roll like this and you mark eight inches around here okay now you now you will now connect it connect it for jeweler like so and connect it now the way you still connected it please make sure you don't have any sharp bending here the way you connected it you still place it like so and connect okay so you connect to this place your front uh hip pad is ready now for the back i will not advise you to go to this extent okay i will still allow you advise you to leave it to maintain this particular just the hip is where we want to highlight it's always more beautiful that way but i want to go as well my for those that will say no i don't have bum bum and i want to pad also the hip okay to pad also the butt area so you can come in here you know your zip allowance is this way this thing does not have zip allowance but because i'm working with the front pattern right so you place two inches from that zip allowance i don't place on the zip allowance so just two inches from where the zip allowance started for the back you come in by two inches which is somewhere around here okay now whatever you are going to be doing make sure you start from where the front uh, hip padding started from okay so you rule your okay so now you make sure that the two start from the same place now on this particular side again that is where the back one is still going to come and end till come down this way guys mine is sharp okay 
because my the, the measurement I'm using is small. By the time you plot it on your own normal human size measurement, you will see that these sharp endings will be there. It will be freer. Do you understand? But anyhow you are marking, make sure you don't have any sharp corner. Okay? So now you cut. Okay? You will cut out the back side first. I've cut out for the back side. So I will place my wording on fold. So now you cut two of these. You have cut for the back and it's two. Okay, right side and left side. We keep it. We have cut out for the front. We also place it on fold. Now, when you are placing it on fold, this wooden has the gum side and the side that is not the gum side. Okay, so when you are folded, fold it in a way that the side that has the gum is outside okay this is because you will be gumming this side on the clothes let's go now this is the back pattern this is the front pattern I open it this way this is my front pattern right I open it this way okay I place it remember that you came down by two inches here yeah? remember that you came down by two inches here yeah? when you were when you were uh, marking it now you are going to invest now you are going to invest in Hemingway. Okay, you are going to invest in Hemingway. Okay, you will make sure that you lay the whole. Remember that there is already gum here, but irrespective of the fact that there is already gum, lay hemming gum. This is what is called hemming gum. Okay, the small one. Okay. Lay hemming gum. Remember that you came down by two inches from the waistline and place it. Remember that you came down by two inches from the waistline and you place it. But remember that this gum size should be on the fabric. Okay? This gum size should be on the fabric. Then you use your steam iron. But if you don't have steam iron, then you should have a spray bottle. Okay? You should have a spray bottle. You spray it. Spray it so that you can iron. You put a cloth on top of it before you iron, but I won't do that because I have a steam iron. You press it very well for the front. Okay, now you go over to the back. This is the back pattern. I want to assume that this is my back pattern. Now, remember that you came down, but before then, just lay it with hemming gum first you lay it very well mine is not fine because i have not i didn't cut the normal measurement by the time you cut the normal life measurement and follow the illustration you will see that it will not be difficult now this is the gum side you place it remember that you came down by two inches okay now this is the uh the gum side you place it this way remember that you came down by two inches okay now you use your steam iron to iron properly okay you see how it look like okay now the way you cut this one is the way you are going to cut your lining 
okay the way you cut this material is the way you are going to cut your lining and just turn it the reason is that if you do not gum it on this particular side on the material if you like do what works for you okay you can gum on the lining or you can gum on the fabric but i prefer gumming on the fabric because it will be very obvious okay though the argument for gumming on the lining is that when you gum on the lining you can still sew it down but for me but for me by the time i join this fabric this way okay and turn with lining and with all the hemming there's another a you invest in hemming gum this is not the proper hemming gum to use there's a stronger hemming gum that when you gum it on this particular it nothing will remove it from here okay nothing will remove it from this material if you gum it here if you use that hemming gum so when you use that hemming gum you now use your lining to turn it but if you don't have the hem that hemming gum that this is what you have then please do not gum this uh, this thing to the uh, material gum it to the lining so that after gumming you can either tack it around or you sew it down okay but if you have that hemming gum there's a, a thicker one I, I don't know where my people dropped it we can look for things in this shop so if you have that particular hemming gum that is stronger is times three of this one stronger if you use it to gum then it will definitely stay so let me go to the sewing machine and bring it back to show you guys this is the material i've joined them together okay i've joined them together do all this before fixing your band okay anyway is you will definitely have to fix the do it before fixing the band because you have not even fixed your lining so you now turn inside don't forget to notch it and you trim out any excess that you might have made mistake with And make sure you cut it close to the line. Make sure you notch it very well. Notch it properly so that it will slip. So use your soft wording to bring out the shape that we want. The correct way of ironing is when you finish attaching the two sides together, trim out all the excesses, iron the seam lines open first from inside. Iron these seam lines open, okay? Iron it open so it becomes flat. After you have finished notching it, then you turn it inside out and then you iron properly. Guys, by me looking at it, you see the thickness has already formed you can see the thickness it has formed so by the time your own hips that is the owner enters it you see the effect is going to be given and it will be more beautiful guys you can see you can see the effect that is already given even without even being a normal human size okay you can see the effect is already given okay so by the time your hips enter everything lapses well if you cannot get it correctly on fixing on this on the material please do well to do exactly what i have done here on your lining okay but it's just that when the person is moving it might be shaking but if you know you can place it well fix it on the lining before fixing it here that way you won't have issues of whether it will lap or it will not lap guys you can see even the hip is already showing with this you get thickness and fullness for whatever you have sewn Thank you for watching this video guys. Let's go over to our jacket tutorial. We are working on notched jacket, notched collar jacket. You don't want to miss it. Thank you for watching.